Yoga. In this video I would like to talk a little bit about how to prepare for removing an entity. The first thing you need to do is to try to get some good quality support. Um, you can try to deal with an entity yourself, but most people are half blind. We cannot see into the energetic worlds very easily. And even if we can see a spirit, the spirit can just move its energy up or down a bit and then we can't see it anymore. So ideally we want to have an ally who can tell us what is going on or work with us through our intuition. But personally I always advise people to, uh, to pray to a God or greater power who is very knowledgeable on all the different dimensions. So in the voodoo tradition you have uh, Elegba, Papa Legba, Lord of the Crossroads. In the Wicca tradition you have uh, Hecate. Um, and basically within every tradition there's usually a person who is uh, in a position to work with spirits, to judge these spirits. In Hinduism for instance you have Lord Yama, in the Egyptian tradition you have Maat um, and also Horus. Um, so Kronos, of course, if you go in the uh, Greek tradition, uh, Hela, if you go into the Nordic tradition. And all these different gods and goddesses are all in a way embodiments of the same principle that there are many worlds and some worlds are in a way lower worlds which should be uh, confined or contained and if these spirits somehow spill out into our world it is their yeah, in a way, uh, job to guide us in how to deal with it. So let me also make this very clear it is not the job of the God to solve this problem it is the job of the God to help us, to teach us, because they are our problems and we have to learn how to deal with them. This is also our growth, how we can evolve as a priest or a priestess of that uh, deity. So, if you are not into the uh, paganistic traditions, it is also uh, possible to work with more Christian powers called death angels. Um, angels are messengers and death angels are uh, within the Christian tradition sent to guide the dead to their destiny. And Saint Peter is of course also uh, a judge who decides who is allowed where. So that's also a power that can be worked with. Um, I like working with death angels personally. I have worked with them quite a lot and uh, I like actually combining it with working with a deity and the death angels because they have a very different perspective. The deity is there to teach me, to guide me, to help me. The death angels are there to make sure that the spirits go to where they're supposed to go. So they approach the problem from a very different angle. Um, and the death angel is in a way just interested in maintaining the divine order of things. Not so much in teaching me or helping me, but often they will do quite a bit of the work um, because they're just trying to set things right. And it's a very powerful combination to work with. So, knowing that these spirits are, yeah, in a way, uh, feeding and very powerful in their home dimension, it's important that you're not vulnerable to them. So before you start this work, you should know on what level the disturbance is, what kind, kind of vibration are the entities from, and to not be there on that level so that you will be basically invisible to them and uh, by being invisible to them you can act without them realizing it without them knowing what is going on what will happen and the more complex the entity is the harder it will be for you 
to remain invisible because you will have to confine your energy body to yeah, a smaller and smaller uh, frequency range of energies and if the energy entity is actually bigger or smarter than you, you won't be able to hide from it at all. And also hiding your energies means that you're somehow limiting yourself or destabilizing yourself. So hiding works really well with lower entities, but with more complex entities it's often no use trying to hide. And it's better than to stay in your own perfect harmony where you feel yeah, the most powerful within yourself and then have a more active defense rather than a more passive defense as is possible with the lower spirit. It's also very necessary that your own uh, energy body does not show too much weakness. So it is not very good to try to remove entities or do very complex energy work if you are sick, if you are under the influence of drugs. Um, if you're still uh, emotionally upset or traumatized, if you're very stressed, if you're very tired or exhausted, these are all contraindications. Don't do this type of work unless you are really well prepared when you're really ready for it. What also helps is to have external energy sources available to you. Um, if the spirit yeah, uh, gets into a fight with you, uh, you will consume a lot of energy. Your energy body will get damaged, it will need to heal itself, and you will need to be able to throw energies at your opponent to disrupt it. And of course you can use your own life force and throw it at that spirit to try to disrupt it. Uh, and when you're shooting it, but it's at the same time shooting you or ripping you or doing things like this. And it can be extremely exhaustive. Um, if you perform a sacrifice, you can liberate energies from the physical world to make them available to your uh, spirit. Um, the problem is, if you don't do the sacrifice well, then you're actually also giving weapons to your enemies. Because they can also use this liberated energy to attack you with. So using sacrifices are, is very much a double-edged sword. Uh, personally I like to sacrifice things which yeah, are not easily accessible to my enemies. So if I would for instance uh, sacrifice um, yeah, a piece of yeah, uh, chicken um, and the chicken had a very horrible life, then it will have a lot of pain and frustration and other energies. So it will, the energy which comes out of the chicken will be very available, will be food for my enemies. But for instance, if I sacrifice a biological apple, um, it will have very pure life force, but it won't have pain, frustration, anger, or other things which can act like food the entities which I'm trying to drive away. So in sacrifices try to sacrifice something which is as good and as pure as possible. You can also in a way not use an object as a sacrifice but as a lure or as a trap. So if I'm trying for instance to catch spirits which have to do with misery and suffering then I could use the chicken to lure them because they will want to come to the energy to feed on it and this way I can gather all the spirits which are in a room or in a house and get them to cluster in one place so I can try to trap them and deal with them instead of having to chase them all over the house and then running from room to room to room and yeah so these things will really help the other thing is to make sure that indeed the spirits won't ask for reinforcements or to go away to come back later. So you want to have a more or less the element of surprise in your favor. The more complex spirits can read your mind, so it is very good if you don't think too much because your thoughts will betray you. It is good if you have a kind of a routine which you follow 
almost automatically without thinking because then they don't know what will be coming as easily. The smarter spirits can still figure out also your routine because they can look along your uh, line into your past, what you've done before. But those are really the very advanced spirits. But having just a little road of how to perform the cleansing is very helpful. One of the first steps should be, besides preparing yourself, also preparing the space. Um, you can do a healing in your space or in the client's space. Generally I prefer to go to the place where the client is because there might be spirits who are moving in and out of the client a lot. And also most entities are bound to a place rather than to a person. So if a person is yeah, having one entity which is bothering them, uh, you can count on it that there will be eight others in, like for instance, their bedroom, and they're just hopping in and out of that person as they are um, yeah, feeding occasionally. So seeing entities on people generally means there is also problems in their homes. Not always, but very often. What needs to be done is that you also uh, make sure that the energies which they want are locked away as securely as possible. This usually means putting these energies away in your own lower chakras and making sure your own life force does not circulate there so that these yeah, feelings and emotions cannot be triggered easily. That they have to put their own life force into you and expend their own power to get you to be angry or sad or upset rather than that they are using your own life force to create uh, food for them. So you're kind of reversing it, because in general they will try to manipulate you and expend your life force to generate energies in their frequency range. And what you want them to do is to force them to expend their energy to grab a hold of you and try to give them some food. And ultimately you want to exhaust them drain their energy and give them almost nothing back and for this you need to have a good amount of self-control because whenever a pattern becomes stimulated it tends to pull in more life force get stronger and become more dominant so if i have uh, an anger pattern it gets a little bit of life force it swells up it starts absorbing more life force gets to be a bigger anger becomes more dominant and then also it takes control over all my consciousness over all my chakras and the anger will control me so what you need if you're dealing with an entity is to be able to control all these aspects of your own spirit of your own being what you want to happen is that life force gets expended into the anger but the anger is, in a, is not using it for itself, but in a way just giving itself up, giving the life force it has absorbed up to your, your own spirit. So the anger will try to grow once it gets stimulated, but the anger itself should be conditioned to say like, no, this is not the right time, this is not the right situation, this is not... I'm not called for to be angry, so rather than use up this energy and make myself more strong, I will be very subservient to my spirit and let this energy go towards my spirit. So all the life force it gets channeled into your own spirit. And thereby your own enemy is feeding your spirit, making your own spirit stronger while it is depleting its own energy. So self-control is essential for exorcism. If you don't have enough self-control, don't attempt ex exorcisms. This is also the role uh, on a karmic level of these entities. They go to our weak spots, they stimulate our weak spots, and this way they are forcing us to develop self-control, to control your sadness, to control your anger, to control your doubts, to control your fears. Because if you don't control yourself, you will be controlled by them. And 
we don't like it that all these things are coming up and if we don't like it we need to stop it by practicing self-control by disciplining ourselves by meditating uh, by prayer and this way we can evolve ourselves and the more we evolve the less we will need these lower spirits as our teachers as our guides so um, the other thing is try to seal the space so usually before I go into a house to hunt the spirits I will try to encapsulate the house from outside and then go room by room compartmentalizing the whole space and then go room by room uh, removing all the entities from the house um, because if you don't they will just yeah, hide, they will move around and a hiding spirit can be very difficult to detect they often go into symbolic objects like masks, like statues, like pictures and mirrors are also very favorite objects um, they can also go into books they can go into lots of different spaces and they usually prefer spaces where the energy is very stale where there's little movement so they like the attic, the cellar, uh, archives, storage rooms um, because there the energy is left alone and they can retreat there to rest another favorite place for them is the bedroom because usually the humans are in a very vulnerable state when they're sleeping so this is the best time to feed or to try to influence them uh, usually the cleanest spaces in the house are the kitchen and the bathroom water absorbs energies and the constantly flowing water is in a way draining the energy out of the bathroom so there's very little food there uh, the kitchen has a lot of uh, life force moving around uh, which creates a rather chaotic unstable energy because food is coming in food is being transmuted prepared uh, and all these transmutation processes also disturb the energy bodies of the spirits so also if you want to in a way hide or recover or rest a bit it's best to go to either the bathroom or to the kitchen to heal yourself up again before continuing your challenges um, these are also your two main weapons um, by having running water in a room or by having fire in a room you create a very transmutational atmosphere which ultimately yeah, dissolves the coherence of the spirits which exist there and also more importantly it dissolves their mechanisms because often what a spirit will do if it cannot overpower a human directly it will uh, in a way poison the atmosphere to weaken the human so it will add energies to a space which in a way create doubt create fear create anger create uh, certain types of feelings and people are more used to defending themselves against other humans they're less used to defending themselves against spirits and they're even less used to defending themselves against inanimate energies in their surroundings so this is generally also a weak spot in humans which the spirit will try to exploit rather than attacking the human directly or trying to influence them directly it will poison the environment and thereby the person will get weakened will become unstable or will go into a state of depression anger pain suffering uh, or whatnot and by going into this state that part of their yeah, being will become more predominant more life force will feed into it and they will actually start maintaining this negative atmosphere but all by themselves without the spirit having to do anything it's often an investment the spirit is making by creating a very negative atmosphere in the space and then the human will yeah, flow, become part of the environment, will react to it by making the environment even more uh, strong and more nourishing, more home to the spirit. So by having a regular cleaning of the house, by fire, by water, um, you also prevent spirits from nesting 
in the domain. And often, uh, before I really start the cleaning, I will just put candles in every room um, to create uh, already a weakening so that when I go in to confront them, the terrain where the confrontation will take place will no longer be completely in their favor, but it will become more neutral. Often also spirits, when they feel that you have knowledge and you are a real challenge to them, they will choose to leave or choose to go. And I usually allow them to go. Uh, some people feel that this is bad, that, that the spirit who is allowed to leave will then haunt or bother somebody else. Yes, this is true. Um, but ultimately, I think this is also a natural process. Like you can try to eradicate all bacteria or all viruses or all parasites but it will not work and in the same way I don't think all of them can be eradicated and just like uh, anything a disease cannot flourish if everybody around it is strong and healthy the disease will simply die out and disappear and it's the same with these spirits if they don't find enough food, they cannot maintain themselves in our level of consciousness and they will return to the lower astral. It's just the nature of things. So, I hope that this has given you some insights or some tips on how you can prepare yourself um, for performing an exorcism. In the next video I will give a small demonstration of how to perform an exorcism and how to remove a spirit from a person's body. Usually they are not in the body, they are just in the aura, which uh, makes it a lot easier because the aura is much more flexible, will recover more quickly than the body. And you will need less precautions to get it out of the aura than out of the body. So, I wish you much enjoyment the next video and success in ridding yourself and others of troublesome